Good Good morning. Okay, it's nine o'clock. Um, first of all, I would like to say welcome to all of you uh, to teaching today, and thank you for coming. And uh, today I am going to talk about the pardos, the intermediate state. Uh, but in order to talk about pardos, uh, I will explain you what does mean the pardo in Tibetan later, but um, it's uh, intermediate state. So in order to understand the pardo, we need to um, understand what uh, is life. Pardo is about life. What is life? More importantly, what is the purpose of life? So two things, what is life and what is purpose of life? Uh, the uh, Buddhist definition of life is something that, as you know, something that goes around and around. Life is a continuation, temporary, impermanent, uh, changeable, and, um, and full of pos possibilities. Uh, so when we are talking about life, um, uh, when we say full of possibilities, uh, enlightenment, beautiful, right? Enlightenment is possible. Uh, freedom from suffering is possible. Um, uh, not freedom from suffering is possible. So you see, full of uh, possibilities. Uh, right now, we are a human being with uh, a precious life, human being, precious life. But when we say possibilities, so when you think about your life, you are a human being. Uh, you know that, right? You are a human being. Uh, with, uh, You know you are a human being, but maybe you don't know uh, you have a precious life. But suddenly uh, becoming an animal is possible. Uh, being born into different realm is possible. So anything is possible. Anything is possible with life. Life also means the intermediate state, which is something in between. For example, right now, um, this very moment we have is in between past and the future. Whenever we are between two moments, that is life. That's what I understand. That, that's Buddhist uh, point of view. Uh, we are in between two moments. That is life. So it is the most important moment 
um, that we have uh, when we say intermediate states or pardo. What we do and how we handle this moment is all that matters. You have to understand that. So life is very, very important. So we all have uh, to uh, appreciate our lives rather than a blame. So now you see, I kind of like in, in short, like briefly, uh, the definition of life. So all of these sort of uh, connotation of Tibetan, we say sutpa, you know, or tsoa, a life is like sutpa, tsoa, all together uh, we can call life or samsara, right, samsara. This life, ordinary life, and ordinary samsara, continuously not living consciously is one of the agents that cause us to spin endlessly around and around. So because this mind's lack of awareness leads us and result in birth and death. Whenever there is a birth, there is a death. So we usually, uh, as you know, you heard many times from me, uh, forget. We usually forget that we have a mind of awareness. And we are, um, we are constantly unaware of what is happening. That's what I mean. Like we forget that we have a mind of awareness. Means like we are, you know, all the time like unaware of what is happening. Because it is difficult to con continuously like, uh, you know, constantly be aware uh, as ordinary people, untamed mind whose mind untamped, where well, it's difficult to constantly be aware. Lack of mindfulness, awareness. So these constant distractions of continuously, not knowingly living is what Buddhists call ignorance. And this ignorance becomes the cause of all these uh, samsaric delusions. And, uh, and, and, and uh, out of this not knowing and wrong views, uh, we create the most powerful two emotions. This is how our desire and anger start to develop. And then this leads uh, to hope and fear. And when our hope is very strong, very strong, then it becomes attachment. And when our fear is strong, then it becomes anger. So you see, it's very easy to understand. There are three afflictions, actually. There's three afflictions, ignorance, attachment, anger. The most powerful and controlling and dangerous afflictive thoughts, if they are not transformed, you know, um, therefore, uh, these afflictive thoughts and emotions can be very uh, dangerous if we uh, sort of don't purify them when we have chance, opportunity. Means like uh, a human being with a uh, precious life, 
we have chance, we have opportunity to purify this dangerous and powerful negative emotions. Three, three afflictions. All other, uh, we have so many emotions, afflictions, but all of them uh, develop from these three afflictions. So the uh, Buddhist uh, um, purpose of life is to understand the truth of the nature of life. So we, in order to understand, uh, Bardo said, right, what is life and what is purpose life? Do you understand now you like, life is huge very complicated one way very complicated but the other way very simple it depends on how you handle how you uh, take care of it me life is very simple um, but okay that is that's kind of like life and then what is purpose of life purpose of life is to understand the truth of the nature of life so everything, as I said, everything is possible, but not knowing this view of the true nature of life, what we call delusion, right? Delusion. So when we, we, are, uh, we are having this uh, mistaken view that everything is, uh, everything is permanent, and then we accumulate a lot of negative karma through these three, um, three, um, three. This uh, what do you call it? Moon, mm -hmm. and Tibet. Three these uh, afflictions, you know. Uh, and as a result of that, then uh, we experience uh, what we call life, right? In samsara, life or samsara. And because you know our everyday experience actually reinforces all of these emotions. <laughs> and as you know, samsara is motivated by ignorance, attachment, aversion. Um, we have to abandon attachment. That's all about today, Bardo teaching. From a spiritual point of view, when we look at why we suffer a lot, we will see the original causes and conditions. Just two things. Our current life is a result from our past life. And in addition, this life will be the cause of our future. Uh, so everything Everything that um, we experience is the result of past uh, action. Sometimes they got karma, past karma, means past action. <clears throat> Which means all of our different experience of happiness and an unhappiness are all a uh, result of what we have done in the past. We believe that. So now, what happened between our previous life and this life? Do you remember um, what is sippa? Um, it means possible. Sippa means possible, two things. Um, actually, more than two things, but like here, like sippa means possible and becoming. How do you spell that? Becoming? How do you spell sippa? Sippa is um, sip, S I D P A. Sippa in Tibetan. Um, life. So, possible. Everything is possible with this life and becoming. 
which means life is, as I said, continuation of becoming. Okay? And uh, all of our existence can be categorized into four time uh, periods. Life, death, after death, and rebirth. In Tibetan, you know, like Sutpa, life has a beautiful meaning. Do we have that meaning like in, in English when we say life? What does actually you know, life? What is what is life? And in Tibet, as I said, possible, becoming, you know, when you explain about all these possibilities, everything, worldly, spiritually, it has a really profound meaning, you know, when we say sitpa. So sitpa is, as I said, four different things, life, death, after death, and rebirth. And these four time periods represent the, uh, the four uh, intermediate states, which are called uh, the nature, uh, intermediate state of this life, uh, uh, the, the painful intermediate states of dying, uh, the luminous intermediate states of dharmata, the ultimate nature, and the karmic intermediate states of becoming. Okay, those are, you have to understand, pardo. Therefore, and these are what we call pardo, right? Pardo. I'm going to explain uh, all of this in detail. So, the pardo is a Tibetan word, pardo, uh, that is, uh, uh, pardo, you know, as an intermediate state. Which is, uh, which is a period between two events. So that, um, so that um, whenever we are in between two moments, we are in pardo state, okay? Because the past moment has ended, but the future moment has not arisen, right? Therefore, Therefore, as you know, the Pardo teachings are about how to make our life meaningful. So, um, Karma Langba, the great uh, teacher, teacher, revealer, teacher, Karma Langba, today we're going to uh, talk about his root text, the Pardo text. And his root text um, on the Pardo teaching says that uh, when you find yourself in the intermediate states of this life, you need to practice Dharma diligently by listening, contemplating, and meditating. So these are the three wisdoms. You know these things. These are, these are very, very important for Buddhist practitioners. These three wisdoms, the wisdom of learning, the wisdom of contemplating, and the wisdom of meditating, which all uh, give us some personal experience of practice. Without these three wisdom, you cannot practice Buddhism. Buddhism, in order to practice Buddhism, the wisdom is the number one. Very, very important. That's why right now we have human, uh, precious human life. And this Pardo teaching, this is Pardo. This life is a Pardo. Right now we're in, 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 in between. So this, this Pardo of this life is actually 
uh, the part of the teaching according to Karma Langbas, the text, how, how you make meaning for life through practices, through wisdoms. So that is how to make your life meaningful. So that is, you know, like, that is a short definition of uh, what is life. And um, more importantly, what is purpose of life? Now, the Pardo teachings can be taught in uh, many different ways, but according to um, Pardo, uh, the, the, the liberation through hearing in the Pardo, Pardo in Tibet we call Tudur Chimo, okay? Tu means hearing. Dol means liberation, chimmu, uh, great. So this is a very important uh, teaching. So according to uh, liberation through hearing uh, in the pardo, there are six pardos, right? Six pardos. As I said, they are a uh, nature pardo of this life um, uh, in Tibet, um, Sitpa pardo. Uh, and uh, uh, the illusory pardo of dreaming um, and practiced pardo of meditation, three. And then we have the painful pardo of dying, chika uh, pardo in Tibet. And then chunit pardo is the luminous pardo of dharmata. Uh, and then the last is karmic pardo of becoming. So these are six pardos, but uh, some other teachings on the pardo, there are only four pardos. Remember I said, because uh, two, uh, two additional pardos, uh, the illusory pardo of dreaming and the practice pardo of meditation are included within the nature part of this life, right? So when we go to sleep, we have lots of dreams. And then uh, sometimes as a Buddhist practitioner, we meditate, right? So those two pardos are included, the pardo of this life. So if you do that, then we have only four pardos. If you uh, divide it into those three, uh, the the the, uh, the the nature part of this life and illusory part of them and then practice part of meditation. Then we have six pardos. So we will um, discuss each of these um, these pardos uh, more, and um, I will discuss three things during uh, the pardo teachings. First, what it is. Second, how it is experienced. And then third, uh, how to practice during that time and how to deal with those experiences during that state. So I'm talking about our lives, nothing else. This will, these things will happen. Do you believe it? Definitely happen. So we have to prepare. Nature part of this life, as I said, everybody has uh, possessed this precious human life. Nature part of this life. In between. Intermediate state. You have chance, you have opportunity to take care of this precious human life, liberate yourself. You have chance to uh, make your life meaningful. I cannot do that for you, you can. Each individual has responsibility So we're talking about our life, nothing else. And then, of course, painful pardo of dying, 
and all other pardos will come, will happen to us. Definitely. So um, it's this teaching is very important as a Buddhist practitioners. Also in, in the Pardo teachings, it, 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 it talks about how the Pardos appear to uh, an ordinary person who has never practiced and how the Pardos appear to a, a, a practitioner who has some degree of experience meditation practice and how these pardos appear to a person who has perfect realization, great practitioners. So three ways, there are three ways to uh, these pardos appear or experience, different experience, very different. You are very understandable, right? Uh, pardos experience a person who never practiced, no like zero experience meditation, different experience. And then some like capacity experience practice, like us. And then the great meditators who, are, who has perfect realization, liberated. So three experience. So right now we are in the pardo. We are in, in between birth and death, right? So this is we call nature part of this life. So in Tibetan, par means in between, okay? Par do, right? Par do, then B A R D O. Par means in between. And do, do, D O, do is uh, suspended. Um, so par do. Uh, means intermediate state. And after we pass away, we will find ourselves in another pardo. Okay? So we have to understand what, does, what meaning of pardo means like in between. That's it. So please keep in mind these pardo teachings and more importantly, can't forget instructions. When you have this experience, what you do with it. So that's the in, in instructions will uh, uh, give you uh, the how, uh, chance, you know, and how to deal with this experience of Pardo. We all really need them, this, uh, these instructions, because sooner or later, as I said, uh, these Pardos will happen to us. No question. Therefore, uh, it is important to study the teachings on the uh, different uh, different pardo experience. Uh, and uh, the 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 the, uh, the cycle of the six pardos describes our journey through uh, different states of consciousness experience. Uh, in both life and death. And each of um, the pardo has its own unique um, instructions and meditation practice. And uh, the pardo teachings are taught at all levels of Buddhism, from means like from beginners to more advanced students, because there is a different way, uh, there is a different ways to uh, practice these Pardo teachings, whether you are a beginner or you are an advanced student. And the teachings and instructions we will uh, receive are mostly from the uh, tantras. Um, Tibetan, we have two, at the Buddhism, we have two things, tantras and sutras, right? Pama Sambhava, second Buddha, transmitted 
these teachings to all members of uh, his 25 disciples um, in Tibetan, Jemba Nyirnga, 25 disciples. Um, and um, of course, other students. But those 25 disciples were uh, very, very famous in Tibet during that time. Um, and uh, not there. Uh, and, 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 and through the lineage, uh, these Pardo teachings uh, practiced continuously until now, nowadays. And uh, I received uh, these teachings many times, many times from my teachers. Uh, and uh, uh, they uh, came from the treasure revealer, Karma Langba. Karma Langba. Karma Langba uh, um, was in 14th century, 14th century. Um, uh, it is a treasure revealer uh, who remembers uh, the treasure teachings, the teachings from Pamasambhava after different lifetimes. Sometimes, uh, so I will tell you a little bit, explain you a little bit about the treasure things, treasure reveal or treasure teachings, because this text, the six Pardo teaching, this text is treasure teaching uh, from Karma Langba. Um, so treasure teaching, sometimes they, 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 they find letters um, inside uh, the rocks. Most of the time, you know, inside the rocks, and um, uh, sometimes they found um, in the ocean. Sometimes they found in the, um, uh, in, uh, uh, in the trees and uh, different uh, different places. Uh, and when they, you know, open it, cut them, and open, there are some messages, you know, that are written. Uh, different languages, you know, uh, Sanskrit, uh, Tibetan, uh, Bali, uh, uh, most of their Dakini, they call Dakini languages. So as an ordinary person, can I read? And um, not many, like there may, uh, might just be three letters or four letters, Edward letter, I don't know. But, uh, you know, there are not many letters. From each letter, the treasure revealer will uh, remember thousands of thousands of words of teachings from Pamasambhava. These are letters, nothing uh, 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 other than like reminder, you know. Um, Sometimes this Dragini language, the letters say, oh, uh, it doesn't say anything about like teachings. Oh, during that time, Pama um, uh, and we were uh, this place and uh, we saw beautiful birds and uh, uh, very uh, uh, beautiful flowers. And uh, we, we were very, you know, happy, enjoyed like that. That's it. That's not teaching, right? But when they see that, then, oh, then they remember it. Oh, that time. Bama Samba will give us these teachings. And then kind of like, you know, I usually say this like, this treasure, uh, this uh, like uh, reminder letters is like a uh, finger in, you know? Like when you have finger in, means like, like you remember something, right? remind you something, oh, I'm married, or something like that. So <laughs> then it's the, it doesn't tell you everything, but when you see this, oh, we have a beautiful life, and we did this and that, and because of, because of that, then you remember everything, all, uh, you know, happiness and suffering, whatever you, you know, experience, you remember because of that. That same thing, this dog in the languages, they just, uh, they just remember, you know. So, so there are few letters, and you know, uh, for example, in our preliminary, you know, this preliminary text, 
from Dinjim Langba, right? Dinjim Langba was very famous, a great like re a treasure revealer teacher, you know. And so who uh, this this treasure treasure revealer Dinjim Langba? That's our preliminary practice, the text, right? And there are four Dagini letters. Do you see that on the, the first page? There's four Dagini languages, uh, and that uh, you know, uh, and 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 from the four letters he wrote uh, the preliminary practice text, um, and uh, it's amazing these things. You know, one time uh, his fallen is Jingmei Penzo, Kanshin Jingmei Penzo, taught us uh, that one of his teacher teaching, and um, at the end, he told us that uh, uh, this teaching is from Bama Sambawa when he was uh, uh, one of his disciples. Um, they were in, he said, like I remember now, he said, like we were in Sami Monastery uh, in Tibet, the, the first monastery of Tibet, we called Sami Monastery. Uh, uh, and he said, with three other students of Bama Sambawa. So we uh, were like four, four students in Bama Sambawa taught us these teachings. So he uh, explains like that, he, they just remember it. And uh, so usually, you know, uh, this Tantra, Tantic teaching, you know, Bama Sambawa sealed those uh, treasure teachings in um, and, and this uh, student, his, his nature mind, nature, this is, the, this is the one important, so that he will remember them in his next life. Bama uh, Sambhava sealed um, this treasure teachings in nature mind, not ordinary mind. <laughs> ordinary mind, I teach you today this, your, your next life, you never remember it. Because the ordinary, the dualistic mind always change, always, always like, you know, you have a different experience and thoughts and one after another, then you slowly forget everything. But nature of mind, when, when I seal these teachings into your nature mind, you never forget. It's beyond uh, permanent and impermanent. Um, so, um, so therefore, one important thing is when they received uh, the, the, the teachings from someone like, uh, like Bama Sambhava, uh, they both, uh, the teacher and the student, must receive the teaching with recognition of nature mind. That's the thing. So, uh, so that uh, they, they never forget the treasure teachings. Like I teach you, uh, but I'm not like uh, through my wisdom, but it's like my mind, you know, this, this like uh, dualistic mind. And then you listen the teachings with your dualistic mind, uh, we both are not uh, in nature mind, so you will forget. Uh, you, you also sometimes you don't understand what I'm saying. Right? Because this is not uh, like wisdom mind, not ultimate truth. So when these teachers and students are both like, you know, um, receive the teachings or give the teaching, both with recognition of true nature mind. So the Tejur revealers cannot keep the Tejur teachings with the dualistic mind which is based upon ignorance. They never remember the teaching with the dualistic mind. That's the thing. So Teju revealers don't uh, need to think when they write or record the message, the teachings. They just recite it. It's amazing. I've seen, seen this many, many times with uh, uh, my teacher, Kaijin Jingu Panzo, is actually Teju Rebuilder. <laughs> so sometimes, like, it's very fun, you know, I, uh, when we have teachings with him, like, I can't wait. It's just so excited when he teaches. Like, because sometimes, like, 
suddenly like he's talking something different things and then suddenly he uh, he say it the, always there's recorder you know so he say it, the message the teaching tells you reveal. you don't have to think about it. it's just oh, amazing you know you cannot it's amazing so one of uh, another like in my town there was uh, like uh, you know uh, the, the, the student one of the student Dr. Nam Kwan Jigme uh, Dr. Nam Kwan Jigme who is uh, the reincarnation of Patra Rinpoche, okay? And Patra Nam Kwan Jigme was the son of Dinjam Langba. Mm -hmm. So actually in our lineage, we don't have the pictures in his biography and lineage, but it's it's actually um, Nam Kwan Jigme uh, was the son of Dinjam Langba and uh, who was the reincarnation of Patra Rinpoche. You know Patra Rinpoche, right? <laughs> and uh, one, uh, one of his students, Dr. Nam Kwan Jigme's student told me that uh, um, one time he wrote Tejur teachings. This Dr. Nam Kwan Jigme, Tejur, Tejur revealer, he has uh, uh, so many volumes of uh, Tejur teachings. Right now it's actually existing, you know. And uh, um, there were five people uh, sitting next to him. The student, his his student still alive in my monastery. So he told told me, you know, like there were five five people, five students, and each student had um, a piece of paper and pen their hand. And then uh, uh, this teacher start uh, with one person said some teachings, and while that person um, wrote down the words. Um, he give another teaching, the second person, and then second, third person like that. And then when the first student was ready, and he would pick up where he left of, uh, of, uh, without any mystics. That's amazing. Any mystics like that. He gave five completely different Tejur teachings without uh, these two different uh, people and without any mystics. He, he said, like, you, you don't have to ask, like, where we were, you know, like, you have five people, and I, I say, like, there's nothing, right? So it's all my nature mind, like, it comes from my nature mind. It's like, like, uh, 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 spontaneously, you know, like, you wrote, you know, I say, oh, north, 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 uh, north, what, what is that? North is, north, north, uh, uh, the seven line supplication, what is Northwest and the land of Ardiana, so you write that down. <laughs> and then I give you the second different teacher, like different teachings, you know. And then I give you next. And then the first one, you, you say, oh, I'm done. And then I say, what is uh, Northwest land of Ardiana? And then, the and then he say that. <laughs> and he, he, he doesn't need to ask. It's just amazing nature mind. You, we, <laughs> we don't have experience. We have no idea, right? What is nature mind? What is the quality of this wisdom? So um, it's amazing. So um, um, so Tejur, these Tejur teachings, you know, um, can be prayers, you know. Uh, can be uh, sadnas, you know, like pujas, we have this, like, can be Dzogchen teachings, most time, like Dzogchen teachings, um, can be like songs, when you see like Malaripa singing songs, without thinking, like he just sing like uh, spontaneously, right? So that's Tejur actually, through his wisdom mind. Well, it's amazing, when you meditate, when you practice enough, and you develop your wisdom, um, one day you can say these teachings without thinking. The wisdom is so sharp. And then you can write so many teachings wonderfully, you know. So like that. So can be uh, these teachers' teachings or can be songs, you know, other things, like so many different things like that, without any mistakes. This, so... So this teacher teaching did not uh, uh, need to think 
uh, it all are like arose uh, spontaneously and naturally. Everything was like automatic. Um, so that's why, you know, like I think one reason is these Teju revealers, um, um, these things make us like, um, like uh, you know, like Tibetan people believe in reincarnation. Um, because of these things, it's, it's, you know, like prove their past life. If there is no past life, no way. There's no connection, right, to a past life. Then there's no way you can you can write this uh, these teachings um, without thinking, without make mistakes. So I think that's that that is one reason uh, we you know that when people believe past and future life, like you know. No doubt. So these Teju teachings are very important uh, because this, this is very like um, close to Bama Sambhava himself. Um, and they're very, they're, they're, we have very strong sort of connection, uh, the lineage, um, unbroken lineage. So they were hidden, you know, as treasures uh, to be revealed at a later time by reincarnation of um, one of Pamasambhava's uh, disciples. So these hidden treasure teachings are called terma in Tibetan. Terma, treasure teachings are called terma, and they are revealed by a great master known as Terton, treasure revealer. So we have terma and kama. Kama is uh, oral, oral teachings, uh, which is uh, from Buddha Shachiman himself through all the lineage. That's what we call kama. And terma is hidden, hidden treasure teachings from most time like Pamasambhava himself, tantric teachings through the lineage. That's what we call terma. So kama and terma. So we have two different uh, teachings, uh, the way you know, like uh, transmissions, you know. So anyway, uh, these Pardo teachings and uh, that uh, I'm going to uh, teach you are from Karma Langba. Uh, he was in um, 14th century. Uh, he received uh, these teachings from Pamasambhava when uh, he was his, his, uh, his disciples in a previous life. When you write uh, Karma Langba's biography, um, you will know uh, who Karma Langba was. And um, so today, um, I'm going to teach the Pardo teachings based on his teachings, the Karma Langba's root text. It's a, it's a very famous uh, text in Tibet. So that is a general um, explanation of uh, Tejir teachings, um, general explanation of Pardo teaching, Pardo, and uh, general explanation of life and uh, what is purpose of life. That's summary. I just give you the summary that, so that you can, uh, Otherwise, I, I talk, uh, you know, this and that all over, right? So you can't uh, really uh, put them together. What is the essence of his teaching? So this is very important. Whenever you receive the teachings, you have to um, pick it, the essence of the teachings. Then you remember all other, like, the explanation of these different things. But uh, the, 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 the summary of the teaching is very wow. important. Uh, so this is um, my the, the explanation of Tejo teaching. So uh, and then um, we'll uh, going to meditate a little bit, and then I will give you the uh, uh, the Pardo teachings explain uh, Pardo teaching and uh, 
next section. So now we're going to, uh, once you understand that, and then um, uh, listen, listening, uh, contemplating, meditation, right? So listening, contemplating, never forget these three wisdoms. Wisdom of learning, wisdom of contemplating, wisdom of meditation. Very, very important. Now wisdom of meditation. Wisdom of meditation, this time, meditate on emptiness. Uh, you cannot meditate on emptiness, right? Emptiness. Means meditate on emptiness. Uh, usually, <coughs> looking at your mind, uh, without thinking. Um, when I say this, looking at your mind without thinking, if you have some experience of meditation, you will see it. Probably you will understand when I say looking at your mind without thinking. If you don't have experience, then this is like contradiction. I cannot look in it mind without thinking. But when I say that some, uh, sometimes people don't understand what that means, looking at your mind without thinking. Sometimes people think that is like two um, separate uh, like activities, you know. <laughs> First, you look, in, you look at your mind. And then you think like, oh, don't think. <laughs> Looking at your mind without thinking. You think, you know, you know, you must, first you must look at your mind. Um, and then some of you say, when I look at mind, I cannot look at my mind. Mind is formless. How can I look through my, look, in it, look at your mind means like through your, your eyes or what? <laughs> You know, then look at without thinking. You cannot do that, right? But uh, but, but uh, uh, when you look at your mind, you know there's like that act, their action. You know, the act of looking is enough, nothing else. Okay, when you look at that's it. Because when do when you do this, um, you are already without thought. If you really like focus or like on your mind and um, the calmness, uh, the luminous of your mind, then you are already without thought. So you are not doing much in this practice other than just that's it just to look at your mind. In this way, when you are focused on your mind, your concentration is directed towards looking at your mind. So that is very important. Do you understand? Uh, so, you know, if you... All these uh, Bardo teachings, actually, different experience uh, which is very very important to understand your mind and if you want to know about your mind through meditation all you need to do is just relax and looking at your mind that's all the next question is, if I do this, if I, when, when I do this, then there are a lot, like different thoughts and emotions arise. What should I do? What should we do? What should we do with thoughts and uh, so many different thoughts, so many different experiences, for sure, right? So, but don't worry. Don't worry. Just, uh, just don't follow right but uh, um, meditation is like 
one thing is like, if you think like, oh, I am meditating, I'm going to meditate. Like you think in your mind something, this is, this action, this, you, whatever you're doing is like something special. Means like usually like a normal your life, daily life you don't do. So you think this is very special. Then you are not meditating at all. You have to let that go. This is nothing special. It's about your life, you know. So just relax. Come on. Don't think too much. <laughs> just without hope, without fear. Uh, hope is important. Worldly life. But spiritual life, no. No hope, no fear. Then if you have both one of these things, then your mind is not relaxed. Too much expectation, and you don't have that capacity, then you, you know, like this fear, you know, anger comes. And hope, if you really, this expectation, then attachment, you know, you meditate, when you meditate, you have so many beautiful experiences, then you attach to it. You are not meditating. <laughs> So meditation is nothing other than just to relax both your body and mind, okay? If you know how to do it, then you are a great meditator. If you don't, can't do it, you are very beginner. So uh, take care of your life. Take care of your mind. Take care of mind and body. Body and mind are total separate things, but they are related to each other. It's connect very strongly in this life. So therefore, we need like both body and mind. Both need to relax. If your body not relax, your mind cannot. Your mind not relax, your body, no. So both need to relax and then look at your mind without thinking. That's all for, for a few minutes, please. Okay, are you ready? We have five minutes, so.
Okay. Take a break.